Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. Uh, this week we're going to wrap up our dis uh, three-part discussion on the Controlled Substance Act. And one of the main reasons the Controlled Substance Act came to be was this international treaty that we went into in 1961, some 10 years prior to the actual formation of the Controlled Substance Act. The United States, along with 97 other countries, entered into this Single Narcotics Convention Treaty. And basically this was a, a treaty that uh, pretty much gave these countries the uh, carte blanche to control the drug uh, supply around the world, not only the manufacturer, but the distribution, all that, of course, for medical and scientific reasons, you know. And uh, there's uh, the, the formation of the Controlled Substance Act, which fell under Nixon's uh, uh, control, crime control thing that he did in 1970. The Title II of that was the Controlled Substance Act. And the main purpose of the Controlled Substance Act was so that the United States could uphold its portion of this treaty that we were bound to. And uh, of the 97 countries that uh, attended this uh, particular meeting, and they are still members at, at when they meet each year and all, 13 of them uh, we've actually gone to war with since that time or had some type of skirmish. Uh, the list of those uh, goes on and on, but namely a few are Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, uh, Korea, Vietnam, uh, Israel. I mean, those are just a few of the ones that we've had problems with since this came about, and uh, they are still in the control of this board. And basically what this uh, does to the cannabis movement in the United States is that in order for us to get cannabis decriminalized or even taken off Schedule II here in the United States, we have to somehow exit our promise that we made in this 1961 treaty. Now, this treaty was made 50 years ago, and if you think about the mindset then, I mean, this was before the Kennedy assassination. Uh, you look at the mindset of the people around that time, of the, that time of the uh, what's going on around the world, and then you look about what's going on today. We certainly need some type of modernization of this treaty. They've had several amendments over the years and done this and that about it, but basically the uh, primary laws that they went into with at the beginning are pretty much in control today. And uh, when cannabis was first tried to uh, enter into the scene on the international uh, drug control policy back in 1912 and 1925 at the G Geneva Conference, the international community didn't want cannabis on there. And they tried several times before this 1961 meeting. And uh, of course, Anslinger and all of his cronies, they got together and they made sure that they included cannabis in there. And, and uh, as a result, we were bound by this treaty and the United States during Nixon came up with the Controlled Substance Act to help uphold our our portion of what we our responsibility was in this treaty. Now there were each of the countries that uh, were attending this meeting, this conference, uh, they broke into different groups and uh, there was one group called the organic states and these were primarily the producers of the raw materials of drugs around the world. They either were producing hashish, poppies, or, or uh, the cannabis plant uh, types of things. And they, uh, this group, uh, they didn't want much control. They really wanted real weak control by this board. Uh, the next group, uh, the main states group, these were groups that uh, pretty much just uh, depended on these, these countries that produced the raw materials for their uh, different drugs that they needed in their country for research and scientific purposes and medical uh, purposes. And uh, they actually wanted a, a fairly strict control because they weren't the ones producing, so it makes sense that they wouldn't want uh, any types of heavy control on it and all. Uh, then you had a weak control group, and these were, these were people that were just, they were just sort of a sideline show. They didn't really have any production going on in their country. Uh, not to say that there wasn't drug use in their country, but they, they really didn't favor these strict uh, controls that were going on. And then there was an impartial group that pretty much didn't care, like the Vatican. They, were there, they had their representatives there and all, and pretty much they didn't feel like that it had anything to do with them. But since they were at the group, they favored pretty much len lenient controls also. But uh, cannabis, although they were trying to keep it off of it, uh, they did manage to get it on there, and it like the Controlled Substance Act of the United States, which came out 10 years later, they put cannabis in the most strictest category. And of course, they have all the rules uh, about trying to reschedule this and that. And uh, the, basically, the International Control Board on Narcotics are responsible for any changes 
uh, kind of like our drug enforcement agency here in the United States, they have to give permission for any of the changes to occur on the scheduling. So this international board, they had the same duties. Anybody wanted to change the uh, scheduling up or remove something or add something to it, they had to go through this board. Of course, they circumvented it through the United Nations and the United Nations Drug Control Group, but uh, basically it was all a handful of people who wanted to, to if nothing else, just control the world, and that's basically what they were doing. And uh, this, it, it's really sad that we have countries out there that we've been to war with, namely recently Afghanistan, Iran, and Iraq, and, uh, but these people still have just an equal voice as the United States in this board, and they, they actually prevent the cannabis movement from, from taking ground here in the United States any more than it has. Uh, the funny thing about the, uh, the, the uh, single act, as it was later came to be known in a shortened form, they didn't have any laws against growing hemp. Uh, they, they pretty much excluded hemp production from it, and also anything that had to do with uh, medicinal research. Uh, Though these things were ex were excluded from the act, so I think it's kind of interesting that they they left the hemp off of there, but our country hasn't bothered to get into hemp production, and primarily is because they want to control the plant from top to bottom, front to back, and they make lots of money on arresting the one to two million people a year that they put in jail for marijuana. So you know it's pretty clear as to why the Drug Enforcement Agency doesn't want to change anything or or put any kind of uh, uh, scheduling of cannabis other than the, the hardcore one at Schedule 1. Coincidentally, the uh, hardest group in the international group is Schedule 4. They work backwards. Schedule 4 is their worst, Schedule 1 being the least. And with the Controlled Substance Act in the United States, it's quite the opposite. It's Schedule 1 being the ones like cannabis and heroin, and then Schedule 5 for, you know, uh, pharmaceutical drugs and stuff that doctors prescribe. So although the uh, they were both placed into the heaviest and the hardest categories of each one, their scheduling names were quite different. And I think that was done for a reason so they could, uh, you know, pretty much cut their ties and, and when they formed the Controlled Substance Act, they wanted to make sure that, that nobody knew about this single treaty. And uh, so the the difficulty for Americans right now is to exit ourselves from this treaty, and we do have, uh, as with our Constitution, our President, our Congress, we do have the power to exit ourselves from these treaties. And uh, even uh, if they decriminalized or actually took marijuana off the schedule in the United States, <clears throat> it's still going to have quite a bit of embedment in this national treaty. So we really need to be focusing our efforts on getting the United States out of our are getting our hands untied from this treaty because it's preventing anything from going on in the United States. Every time the DEA's petition for either a rescheduling or removal of cannabis from the Controlled Substance Act, ha, ah, they have a great excuse. No, we're bound by our international treaty, so we can't do that. So the first steps that we need to do here in America is get ourselves away from this single treaty. And uh, hopefully that uh, the Congress one day will wake up, maybe our president, I doubt the current one will, but uh, maybe we'll, that we'll see some changes coming up, particularly with this vote going on in California coming up in November. Hopefully this will be the change of things to come. And we're not talking about legalizing medical marijuana. We're talking about outright legalization across the board. And this is really what has to happen with cannabis for it to work in this country. Uh, anytime you make a substance illegal like they found out during the Prohibition days, all you're going to do is create gangs, gang violence, and all over, an, all over a substance that has never sent anyone to the hospital. So you can see the, what's going on here in America. Uh, next week on the Cannabis Corner, we're going to uh, take a look at the, uh, what we've already talked about from the beginning of the Marijuana Tax Act through the Controlled Substance Act. And we're going to look at all the different things that uh, have been pro-cannabis pro and, and pretty much people saying, why is this thing even scheduled, yet nothing has changed as far as the laws. We're going to look at the economic impact of that, of uh, what, how much money we've spent not only to try to eradicate it, but also the amount of money that we've spent on incarcerating all these people that we've locked in jail just for possession of cannabis. So join us on the next issue of the Cannabis Corner, and we will go into this in great detail. Thank you very much.